Welcome back. In this segment, Beyond Spotlight's story, we invite our guests to talk about an event or an item that has special meaning to them. So Tony, what would you like to share with us today? Certainly, I think the item is quite obvious. It's a 75-year-old typewriter that belonged to my father. And this is first typewriter that uh, he owned um, for, to start his uh, import-export business. Maybe I can start the story uh, when he was a child. I mean, he was 11 years old when his father passed away, and that's actually during the Japanese war. So tough, tough times Very then. tough time, and then he become the breadwinner all of a sudden. So how, what can he do, you know, as a 12-year-old kid? So he and his friend sell kerosene, uh, you know, to, at that time, there's no sort of electricity or stuff like that. Kerosene is the major source of energy uh, when you, for the stove. They are actually quite relatively innovative. They actually use the uh, diesel, and distill it into kerosene. And they, and they build their own device, and then I'm surprised they did not explode and kill every one of them. But they did it, and they survived the war just that way. And after that, uh, when he turned 16 after the war, he worked as an office boy uh, to very low-level job and just to keep them alive. But in the same time, he go to night school to learn English, to learn how to use typewriter. By age uh, 20, uh, he actually, um, he doesn't own a phone, so he go to a uh, store, those are, you know, the general store, they have the phone, they bought the phone, and then just start his own import and export business. And then initially can only rent the typewriter, and eventually he make enough money to buy the typewriter. I think it's a matter of the resilience and survival. Uh, at that time, there's no choice, but being innovative and resilient to the adverse you know, environment, and trying to find a breakthrough for himself. And he ended up uh, having a very big family. And then I can tell you that we have uh, 10 brothers and sisters, and each one of us actually have uh, more than one degree. And he support them all. And so from someone uh, who started us as what I call him a kerosene boy, to supporting, you know, 10 children to complete college, and become someone useful to the society, I think indirectly he contributed a lot to Hong Kong. So he must be very proud of you all also. Well, interestingly enough that, um, you know, he is a, we, we're a little bit distant, you know, where he's a very disciplined man, but then we all respect and love him, but we were never too close in a sense. Uh, maybe he is proud of us, but he never say it. Just like the good old, you know, daddy, that he just said, okay, you're, you're supposed to do what you're supposed to do type of thing. Tony, besides being a successful doctor and entrepreneur, you are also a media personality. And I understand, besides uh, appearing on shows, you're also an author. Can you tell us a little bit about your writings? It's actually quite an interesting experience. Um, I actually left Hong Kong when I was 16 and then spent 20 years in Canada. I still read Chinese, but I did not write as much. Uh, but when I first come back, uh, you know, I actually still, you know, the environment is mostly English speaking in the hospital. But until 2006, I actually had the opportunity to uh, interview, just like this one, uh, with one of the magazine, and then talk about some of my research. And then about a few months later, they start, you know, a, a, a um, so-called a, a, a segment and looking for a um, column writer. So they invite me. I said, hey, the last time I write is that you know, many years ago. But I wrote the first story, and the story uh, in English is called The Doctor Can Cry. And that is the very first story that I write for that magazine. And since then, I have been writing about once or twice a week for the past uh, 15 years. So it's actually become a hobby. It's a very interesting. So why I continue to write is the fact that there's a lot of uh, good observation that you see from day to day. It can be about health about food, about love, about friendship. If you do not write it down, you forget about it. But now that since I am obligated to write to the column, I start to linger on those memory and enrich it into a story and put it down on paper. So it's become very enjoyable things for me to do. And compared together, I, right now I have about seven books together, you know, put all those columns together. So the emotional side, um is very important from your perspective. Emotion has to be part of a human experience, that's for sure. Uh, 
the, in my writing, I sum as emotion, particularly my relationship with the patient. And then so, so that actually uh, to, to go deep to my heart, you know, when I try to write about something like that. Uh, but on the other hand, I write a lot about factual stuff, about you know, science, uh, about COVID, about lung cancer. And so those are the so-called scientific topic. I try to share the information with the public through the column. Thank you, Tony. We certainly look forward to your future publications. Thank you. So, Tony, uh, what well wishes would you like to offer Hong Kong? I certainly wish Hong Kong continue to be a fertile ground for health, prosperity, and development. Hong Kong is indeed the fertile ground for healthcare R&D. If a healthy R&D project needs to grow, like this healthy potted plant, you need good seed, soil, and nutrition. By analogy, for the project to get off the ground, we have top universities providing talents to seed innovative ideas and technical know-how. And Hong Kong as an international finance, innovation and legal centre is the place with all the right resources to serve as nutrients for research to blossom. Tony, we've now reached our segment where we were going to ask you a number of questions, rapid fire questions. So Sound. just tell us what you think. Sound like fun. So what's your favourite colour? No favorite colour, it's only a wavelength. Do you think about retirement? What would you do when you retire? Now, that is a tough one because uh, I cannot imagine for me to sit around doing nothing. I try that, it's really annoying. What's the best compliment someone has given you? That is actually a tough one. I, I can share with you one story. Uh, I had one patient who happened to be a colleague um, in this hospital and he's also a very famous runner. So I look up to him, and then, uh, but he eventually had to pass away. And then in the, just the one day before he passed away, uh, I visit him, and he asked his wife to take a picture. And then in the picture, he just gave me a thumbs up. In the deathbed, giving me a thumbs up. So in a sense is that, is death success or failure? But in the process, helping him, he showed his appreciation. So that one image has a the lot one of One image say in my mind that meaning. he was able to, I mean, just to show his appreciation, even despite of him facing death. And he did pass away the next day. Share with us some hidden talents. Hidden talent. Hmm. I think my talent is to making complex things simple. Your proudest moment. My proudest moment is probably not coming yet. Hopefully, it will be the moment when I die. Your biggest fear? My biggest fear that I got buried alive. Any regrets in life? Many. Uh, not becoming something like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you can say thank you to someone, dead or alive, who would that be? Um, definitely, I would probably say it early to my dad who just passed away a year and a half ago. If you can have dinner with anyone in the world, who would that be? Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Hmm, it would be interesting to meet Lady Diana. Um, what is the uh, best way to impress you as a medical student? Mm. Asking reasonable, sound, smart, in-depth questions. Your favorite sport? I don't think I have won, you know, in the sense of watching. But then for myself, I do love golfing. Your favorite exercise? Uh, anything that can prevent me from getting fat is good. Uh, international cuisine, local cuisine, your favorite dish? Ah, now that is a tough one because there are so many. And then, uh, but I still like the classic Cantonese food uh, in a way that give me the all memorable taste. If one can choose a way to go, cancer or a heart attack? Mm -hmm. Now everybody say heart attack because they thought that they can go quite quickly. Um, however, I can warn you that heart disease does not always go quickly. On the other hand, people always fear that cancer can be a long lingering death. But on the other hand, but it's not quite true either. A lot of the patient can live a reasonable good quality of life, and then they may not so-called that pass away time is short. So I don't think there's a one particular disease that can guarantee you a 
good, easy exit. But I can guarantee you, everybody want a good, easy exit. For that, you have to be friend with your doctor. Thank you, Tony, for spending time with us today. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for the invitation. Thank you very much for enjoying this episode of Friday Beyond Spotlights. I am Patrick Zhang, your host, signing off. Professor Mock has such excellent research experience and knowledge that puts him in a unique position as an industry leader. He has written over 220 articles in international renowned medical journals, a special person with great ideas, charisma and energy. Thank you for watching Friday Beyond Spotlights. Until next time, goodbye.